Good afternoon, everyone. It's Saturday, August the 28th, and it's my pleasure to start this week's video update with the most exciting news of the summer. I've been told that after nine months of pretty hard work, Karis and Keenan's breeding program has released its first successful hybrid. Atlas Neil was born last Friday, and I'm told at a very healthy bushel weight of 9 pounds 13 ounces. At this point, the hybrid's still quite short, but I'm told that there's a lot of potential, and we should be excited to see a lot of updates in the years to come. So once again, congratulations to Karis, Keenan, Mark Marilyn, and of course the whole family as well. While scouting cornfields this week, we've had a lot of questions about silage harvest timing. Right now I'm standing in a field of P9188 Acre Max in that landmark area, and it's still at that full dose stage. So we still have two to three weeks before we'd really expect to be in here chopping this field. However, some of the earlier hybrids, including those crossover hybrids that could also be used for grain, we're seeing that they're already denting and in some cases forming that milk line. The earliest corn silage is likely to come off in about a week or so. So if you do have an SLV unit that needs some maintenance, please let us know as soon as possible, as we'd like to have those units ready in time for the chopping to begin. If you need some help with staging corn, please let us know, we'd be happy to come out and take a look with you. Again, there's a lot of field variability this year, so in some cases we're going to have to go out there and take a good representative sample of plants to chop and do a coster test, as having that proper ensiling moisture is going to be more critical than where the milk line is at at a given date. So if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Grain harvest, again, with all that variability, is likely going to be an average to slightly later than average starting date. And again, that's just going to be to give those late emerging ears a chance to start to dry down as well. And that's going to help us have fewer bushel weight issues this year. While the remaining cereal and canola harvests are on hold while we wait for drier weather, the oil seeds in the field continue to mature. The sunflowers that we looked at this week are certainly starting to droop and those heads are starting to turn yellow. On the soybean front, early varieties like P005, A83X are certainly changing color on a field scale and are on track for an average start in terms of harvest date. Of course, that's going to be weather allowing. With the recent weather, we've had a few more questions about Hazlitt Fall Rye. We still have some seed available, and as long as that crop is planted by the 25th of September, that'll give it a great chance to have some fall growth over winter successfully and allow a cut to be taken off basically in that first week of June or so. So again, if you have questions, please let us know. The first planted field that we had this year is already out of the ground and could potentially even be cut yet this fall. So again, that might be an option for those feed producers that are still looking to buffer their stocks moving into next summer. With the return of wetter soil conditions, we've seen that many forage stands, including alfalfa fields that had essentially gone dormant due to the drought, are really starting to green up again. With the lack of feed reserves, it's going to be very tempting to come out here in a couple of weeks and cut this crop one more time. However, we should remember that five to six weeks before that first killing fall frost, the alfalfa is in that fall resting period, where ideally we should really let it stand and replenish those root reserves. These are going to be critical in terms of ensuring winter survivability. The crop that we're cutting off at this point in the season would definitely not be as much as the damage that we're doing when it comes to the first cut next year, as that regrowth is really going to suffer. So please keep that in mind. If you are struggling to have enough feed for the winter, it would be better to wait until after the killing fall frost to cut that crop one more time. You can always leave some buffer strips to hopefully capture a little more snow and help with that winter survivability as well. If you have questions about this, please don't hesitate to give us a call. And again, if you want us to come out and walk those fields with you, please make an arrangement as soon as possible, as it is getting a little bit busier around the office. Thanks again for watching and have a great weekend.